This is James Turner for O'Reilly News, live at OSCON 2008. I'm talking with Tim Bunce, who is uh, currently a consultant working with Shopzilla and is probably better known as the creator and maintainer of the Perl DBI library. So thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. So DBI was probably one of the earliest libraries that got into Perl. When did it first come into being? When did it start? Well, it actually started, the idea started in 1992. Um, back then it was Perl 3 and there were a bunch of extensions to Perl for different databases. Back then we didn't have dynamic linking, so you had to embed the API for a particular database into, in, into Perl and it was a tricky process. So we had ingperl, scipyrl, or oraperl for each of the different databases. And they all had different APIs, and they c you couldn't port programs between them. And Ted Lemon sent an email in September 92 to the authors of these things saying, hey guys, wouldn't it be a good idea if we came up with a common in interface? And about the same time, Larry released Perl 4.0, and we started talking. And we talked and we talked, and two years later, we finally sorted out a, a specification. And Larry released the first alphas of Perl 5. And we went, ah, no, we've got to redo all this now with, with objects and references. And about that time, the guy who was kind of leading the, the editing of the spec, he, he left, and one of the other contributors left. So I said, oh, well, I'll take over the editing for now until somebody else come, comes along. So I took on that responsibility, and I needed an Oracle driver for my work. And so I ended up doing that and the rest is history. So that's the actual first release of the DBI, I think, was in 94. And it almost became a standard module in the distribution. Uh, but at the last minute, I, I said, no, you know, that I think would be a bad I idea. Why so was that? Be there's a lot of problems with dual life modules that uh, if you're in the core, it creates a whole set of extra problems over maintenance and life cycles and release cycles and so forth. So, so you, just you, you wanted to kind of be your own creature that you could yeah. release on your own cycles and yes. things like that. DBI probably is one of the more challenging modules to maintain because you're trying to track how many databases now? Well, if, if you take a broad definition of databases, just in terms of the number of different uh, database drivers available for DBI, then I think we're over 30. There are drivers for Google, drivers for Amazon, drivers for your iPod, you know, anything that you could remotely regard as a, as a, a data store. Right. Yeah, well even, I mean, is Google relational? You know, it's, people have, uh, have taken very inventive views of sort of squeezing things through the, the DBI uh, a API, which is great. I imagine there's been kind of a dynamic tension between people who are saying, can't you extend it so that this cool feature of my database is part of the native mm -hmm. library versus people saying, no, we have to keep it at kind of a lowest common denominator approach. Right. Th there is a tension there, and, and we saw that back in the early days. So it was understood that the, the best way to balance those was to have a lowest common denominator focused on ease of use and, and the most common op operations, but then to provide every database driver with an escape hatch, some way that they could add their own functionality. And, and the, the important bit was that adding functionality to one driver should be done in such a way that an application using it can still port to a different driver and not clash. So for example, some drivers need you to specify a, a data type, and we use a specific attribute for that. But the attribute for a particular driver has a different name to the attribute for a different driver. So all the drivers are given a, a unique prefix. So for Oracle, it's ORA, O-R-A un underscore, and for Infomix, it's I I-X. So all of the private attributes and all the private methods have that prefix. So it means that when you're porting an application, any existing private attributes for one driver won't clash with those of another. And that's, that's given the driver authors a lot of freedom. They can buy into the DBI way of doing things, get 80% of, of the functionality, and if they need a little bit extra, they've got a standard way of doing it that doesn't cause problems. Do you ever get pressure from the vendors in the sense that it's almost in, not in their best interest for the code to be easily portable between databases because then people can move from one database to another? No, I've never had uh, feedback like that, and it, it's, it works both ways. You know, if it 
if code is so easily portable, then it makes it easy for applications to port to sure, your database. Right. So it, it evens out. I know that MySQL, you can get the drivers right from their site. You don't mm -hmm. have to go through CPAN. How, is, how do you keep all that in sync? I don't. You know, that's up to the dri driver authors to, to deal with that. You know, they, it would be impractical for me to, to try to manage that to do it closely, and it would be in, inappropriate as, as well, I think. How much of, of it control do you have? I mean, you know, Larry obviously has admitted he takes the benevolent dictator role for Perl in general. Mm -hmm. Do you see a similar kind of role for you being kind of the uber database person for Perl? No, no. Um, for a start, Larry has stepped back from working on the, the, the Perl 5 code base. So there are other people doing that. So um, the day-to-day -day maintenance is no longer Larry's. Uh, whereas for me, the, the DBI is still kind of my code, and, and I freely accept patches, and the, the source code repository is available, and some people have commit rights, and I'm happy to hand out more commit rights. But you know, it, it's important for me not to be in the way of anybody's creativity. So which is why the, the kind of escape mechanisms in, in the DBI are so important, and it just lets driver authors get on with it without having to come back to me. I do get requests for, you know, let's define this cool feature. Um, so for example, calling store procedures. Right. Wouldn't it be nice if the DBI had a standard way of calling store, store procedures? And my usual response now is to say, well, do it in your driver as, as private methods. And um, when two or three drivers support it, then we'll look and see if there's see enough commonality to, to define something above. So I did something similar with uh, array e execution, kind of bulk e execution. But there I took the view that I didn't want to add that to, to the DBI until there was a pure Perl Im implementation of it. So that if a driver didn't support it, applications would still work. So if you ported an application from a driver that supported bulk up uploads, bulk inserts, to a driver that didn't, the code should still work, it shouldn't break. So um, although some drivers had Im implemented it, I didn't put it in the DBI until, I didn't define a standard interface until there was a pure Perl way of doing it. So it would be uh, safely portable. So you don't have any real control over if someone does new DBI colon colon fill in the blank database. You don't have any real control over whether or not that ends up, for instance, in CPAN. I, I wouldn't want to. Has there ever been anything that came in under your package that you just like held your head and said, why, why, oh why? Uh, no, I mean, just let me clarify though. Are you talking about the DBI namespace? Right. Okay, th there's, there's kind of a convention there that the DBI namespace sort of belongs to modules that ship with the DBI. And there's a DBIX namespace where people are encouraged to put I I extensions. So that, that's... That's uh, kind of like a sandbox? You could kind of call it more like a branding e e exercise, a sort of a way of demarcating what is the DBI and what isn't. So, but it, it's kind of... Yeah, there are a lot leaky. of database drivers that are in DBI colon colon. DBD colon colon. Oh, DBD, right. Yeah. So the D DBDs, people can upload drivers in DBD, whatever namespace. Right. That isn't an issue. Um, and even the DBI namespace, you know, I, I've kind of tried to um, encourage people not to put random things in, in there. But if, if you look on CPAN, there are a few modules in, in that namespace that aren't part of the DBI. Hey, well, Tim, it's been a real pleasure talking to you. And Thanks, James. more power to database drivers in Perl. Thank you. This is James Turner. We've been talking to Tim uh, Bunce. Bunce, thank you, um, at OSCON 2008. Have a good day. Thanks, James.